What's up guys, YPRAFVV here, and today we have the um, continuation, well not really continuation, um, but pretty much this will be a standalone video of how to set up Butterflight. Um, we actually did build this on the last couple videos uh, with the Helio Spring Flight Controller. Um, it does come pre-flash Butterflight. Um, it does have some interesting things, like it has the, um, the F3 processor for the gyro uh, filtering, and then it has the F4 processor for all of the other board functions it wants to use. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, go into Butterfly. We're going to first go ahead and flash it with the newest version, and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and go all the settings in Butterfly to show you how to set it up to take the best advantage of this flight controller. Um, so let's go ahead and stay with me, and uh, let's get into Butterfly. All right, guys, we are actually on the computer. Now, we're not in Butterfly just yet. What we're going to go ahead and do first is go to helioRC.com. And when you get to this main page right here, just click on Wiring and you'll see the layout diagram of the flight controller. Uh, just scroll down and you wanna go ahead and download this hex uh, file right here, which is for the IMUF update um, and actually the flash tool uh, for Butterflight. Um, you can also use it in Butterflight, but I believe they're updating their firmware on their um, flight controller a lot faster than the actual files are getting out on Butterflight. So you just wanna go ahead and come to here and just download uh, the newest version right now is 3.4.3 and IMUF 1.03 is the newest one. Uh, when you're done with that, you can either save it to your desktop or put it somewhere where you actually know where it's at. Um, another thing too you want to go ahead and do, if you haven't already, is download uh, Impulse RC Driver Fixer. Because um, if you notice, when you look at the board, there's actually no boot pins on it. And what you want to go ahead and do is run this and it'll actually put the... Um, flight controller in DFU mode. And not the only thing that it actually does, it actually also installs the DFU, uh, I believe, drivers onto the board. Um, so then when you come into uh, Butterflight, um, you can go ahead and connect your flight controller, because it already has Butterflight pre-installed. So let me go ahead and uh, connect it up here. Plug it in. All right, it's plugged in. And connect. Okay, so it actually will bring you to this screen right here. And all you have to do to put this thing into DFU mode is just type BL. Now you have to have that impulse RC driver fixer on this, or well, it's not going to fix. Now it's not going to work. So BL, and now you see DFU right here on the top right. And then you can go to firmware flasher. And we're going to go ahead and flash the firmware on this with the file we just downloaded. So we're going to go ahead and do is load firmware local. And then you're going to go to your wherever you saved that file from uh, Helio RC. And in mine right here. And then we're going to go ahead and hit flash firmware. And then this is going to erase the board. And then it's going to install the drivers and install the new um, update on the flight controller. And it should be done soon. Um, and also while we're waiting on that also, we'll go back to the um, LURC page and go to documents. And this kind of shows you how to wire it up there. And see right here, CLI commands. Now, this is pretty much all the neat little things. Now, you don't actually have to run dynamic filter on this flight controller. This is actually the dynamic filter here. It's using actually the, the F3 flight controller as, a, as its own proprietary uh, filtering system. And you can actually change all the little tiny things in there. And it kind of tells you uh, when you start flying it, if it's doing certain things, that what settings you can change to improve the flight performance. So it actually is a really detailed flight controller where you can really tune certain things and really get you know your performance out of it that you really want to. Um, so the first thing we're going to do once that's done, as you see right here, it says IMUF update. So we're actually going to, once we get that loaded up, um, we're going to go ahead and update the IMUF driver on here. And that's how you update it. As you go into CLI, you type in IMUF update, and then it'll update the to the latest hex, which will be located on this website, as it states. Take a little while for it to flash. Let 
Maybe we can cut this out. Be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and it's all done flashing. It says program successful, and that's how you know it did it successfully. And let's go ahead and connect. And like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in IMUF update, and it said enter. And it went ahead and updated the drivers on the flight controller. I started Butterfly and started kind of playing with some settings already. Um, but I'm going to go through all of them for you. Um, so this is pretty much the main screen here. Um, I already disabled the accelerometer, so you're not going to see this thing moving right here. Um, but I'm going to go, ahead and go through is going to go through the ports tab, and you need to pick the serial receiver that you actually used. And since I was using Crossfire and I connected it, my Crossfire receiver to UART3, I connected it to um, check this little box here. And then I'm using Smart Audio on UART2, so I have Smart Audio right there. And uh, it has a little drop down here of whatever you want to use right there. Now, if you're using uh, you know, a Tyranna, uh, Fry Sky protocol or whatever, um, you can go put Smart Port not next to the serial receiver. It's like seeing, for instance, I had my smart port hooked up to York 4. We just clicked it there. Um, next thing we're going to do, we're going to do a save and reboot real quick. And come on, connect. Okay. And then we're going to go to configuration tab. So I already went ahead and set D shot 1200. It's going to probably default to 1 shot 20, 125 or something like that. Um, whatever ESCs that you purchased, um, you want to go ahead and choose the best um, ESC protocol that you want to use for it. Um, now the motor idle throttle value, I actually usually do set that up a little higher than 4.5. I usually go up to 5 and leave it there. Um, I usually don't have a problem with it. The reason why you can change this is if you are at a, you know, a minimum throttle and you notice your motors are kind of like twitching one way or the other, um, you just raise it up a little bit and it'll stop that twitching. Now um, on this, I think it does default to 16.16. Six, uh, 16. Um, so I went ahead and I raised it to 32.16. I want to see how it does on this type of update frequency and because it can handle it. And also I did change my, remember I did reverse my um, flight controller around, so I did change this to 180. Now if you left your flight controller with the arrow pointing forward um, or towards the front of the quad, then you don't have to change this at all. Sorry, let me change that. Okay, and scrolling down here, I did dis disable the accelerometer. Any of you know CPU load is only 28%, which is I haven't ever overclocked it or done nothing, none of that stuff. Um, com personalization, chameleon. That's what I put in there. And then this is right here is where you put your receiver information. So I have the serial based receiver as Spectrum Satellite or whatever, or SBUS. Now I'm running Crossfire as the serial provider. And then down here, I have telemetry enabled, air mode, OSD, and anti-gravity enabled. Dynamic filter, do not put this on on this flight controller because it uses the IMU um, protocol, uh, internal proprietary filtering that it does have inside this flight controller, so you don't need, need to have the dynamic filter enabled. And then this right here is all your beeper configurations. And then this is the battery. I usually don't play with this that much. I mean, if you want to go ahead and have your minimum voltage or you like to have this specific, this specific way, uh, you can go ahead and change that right here. And then in pit tuning, you want to go ahead and go to uh, this front page right here. And I have my anti-gravity already at five, and that's pretty much a good starting point for it. And then I don't touch any of this stuff. I will start my, I will touch my RC rate when I set up my rates. And then we have the filtering, which we'll go ahead and put on as PT1. I think it will default as biquad. You want to go ahead and put that as PT1 and disable your notches right here, these two. And then I'm leaving the third notch on just to make sure that my motors aren't going to get hot. And if they don't get hot, I'll go ahead and disable that as well once we, after we made it. And then this right here is a receiver tab. And we're going to connect the battery in. Yeah. 
And as you see, I have my throttles and sticks are showing. And if you don't, if it's kind of in the wrong spot, you want to go ahead and change your channel map to whatever it is correct on here. So if you move your throttle stick, you want to show your throttle stick on here. And pretty much your goal on this here is that at, at your throttle on the bottom, you want it as a thousand. And on top, you want it as 2000, but I noticed with the crossfire, I can only get it at 2001, so I leave that alone. Um, same thing on the yaw, pitch, and roll, you want that as uh, 2000, 1000. Uh, so if I deflect it 1000, 2001, which is fine. And then yaw, 1000, 2000. So that's all set up correctly. Um, to set this up correctly, what you have to go ahead and do in your model is you just want to go ahead and go to your outputs on your Tyrannus and then you can go ahead and change that uh, on each little channel you do have. And another good thing too here is you can check what aux um, channel you have. So I know on this switch I have aux 2. I know this is probably aux 1. This is aux 3. And this is aux 4. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my modes tab here first and I'm going to go ahead and put this as aux my aux I believe this is aux 1 engine. Yep. Engine and I'm going to go ahead and slide this over so we're going to pretty much setting the switches up to tell the quad what we want the engine switches disabled. to do and I think we and drag that like that let me turn that down so we don't hear it there, that's better and then I just go ahead and save that. So now we have our arm switch already set up. My beeper switch, which I believe is on aux two. Nope, it's not on aux two, so it must be on aux four. Nope, not on aux four. Yeah, aux three. So that's my, gonna be my beeper switch. So when if I lose my quad or I can't find it, just hit the little beeper and I can kind of hear it if I get kind of close to it. So we're going to save that. And I don't usually worry about any of this. I don't use black box yet really that much. I don't have camera control hooked up. And I don't use I don't use a pre-arm switch. I'm kind of old. I like it the old way where I just use one switch. So that's pretty much all the switches I usually set up besides now I do need to have my expert mode. So if you notice, you can click expert mode here and it'll bring up this adjustments part here. And this is where I'm gonna go ahead and put my, yeah, that's it. This is where, this is how you go ahead and you set up your profiles. And what I want to go ahead and do when I use the aux4 channel is I want to change my rate profile selection via aux4. So when I change my channels, it'll go to either uh, rate profile 1, 2, or 3. And we're going to save that. So let me go ahead and go to the pit tuning spot here. And I'm going to set my first rate profile. This is my rates that I use and this will be, uh, this will change for everybody. Uh, however you're comfortable with your rates and your sticks. But I usually run um, 1.05 and then 0.79 on super rate and then I add 30% expo or 30 expo. That's usually my main freestyle rates. You get nice flips and rolls but you also do have some stability in the middle as you notice right here. And then I'm gonna to switch to rate profile two and pretty much do the same thing. Well, once it wants me to do it. Well, it's because the switch is enabled, so it's not gonna let me do it. That's on 1.5. So if I switch the switch, it goes to rate profile two. And on this one, what I do is I at least actually just leave this one stock and I just add expo onto it. So that's my second one. And then on rate profile three, put the 
this down here. No, I'm sorry. This one I crank up. So about 1.80. This is my rate, my racing rates here. Tons of expo on it. I actually added too much. There we go. There it is. I try to get down to a thousand again. I'm still kind of new doing this part of it. I haven't really made racing rates a lot. There it is, 1.6. That's where it was. And that's that. So that's all done. I already have my rate profiles all set up. And receivers all pretty much set up already. Now the only thing I have to go ahead and do is my motors. And this is the section where you can go ahead and check, check make sure your motors are actually on, connected to the right pins on your flight controller and also that they're should, spinning in the right direction. Um, all you have to do is make sure your props are off and you just click on this and then you just raise the corresponding motor. So I already know from um, experience that my motor one and motor four have to reverse and be Heli 32 suite. Um, so go ahead and go into the filtering uh, settings here. Now, if you go back to the website here, you notice set IMUF. Um, pretty much what we're going to do here is we're going to CLI and type in set IMUF. Now, these are all the settings of the internal uh, filtering of that F3 processor that we talked about that it has. Um, right now, we're going to go ahead and leave this as default. Um, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm not going to touch anything. I want to kind of fly it, see how it feels, and then we're going to go ahead and start changing these settings and see how we get the least oscillations and uh, get the most out of Butterflight we can. Um, so what's really good about this flight controller is that there's not a lot of changing of settings on it until you start actually wanting, noticing things wrong with it, and you want to change. And you got a lot of options here to change, and it kind of guides you here on this. Um, website on how to change certain things of what you're looking for when you're flying and to change it either up or down and whatnot. But I think that pretty much does it for setting up Butterflight. Um, yeah, I mean pretty much this thing is ready to fly. The only thing I have to do is just set up Heli 32 and just swap the motors 1 and 4 around and uh, it should go ahead and uh, take off. So I really do appreciate you guys watching. Um, look forward to the next video. Um, we're going to probably do a maiden with this flight controller and uh, with this Chameleon TI. And we're going to really get to see how this thing really does perform and if, see if it's worth it to you guys and if it's worth it to me. Um, like again, like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.